Good morning everyone. This is the sixth leg of a seven leg flight. Marseille to Lyon in France. It's a Corsair flight out to Reunion and back. The flight's a little bit of an, a roundabout route. It goes from Orly to Lyon. Lyon to Marseille. Marseille to Reunion where it goes into Saint-Denis. And from Saint-Denis it then goes over to... It's quite a difficult one to say. So. Anyway, so from Paris down to Lyon, from Lyon to Marseille, and from Marseille over Africa into the Indian Ocean and on to next, well, between Madagascar and the, you might, most people, well, a lot of people have heard of this one. But so this is uh, Mauritius, and this is Reunion, which is next to Mauritius, off the coast of Madagascar. It then flies from Reunion to this to Mayotte, but I, I'm going to have difficulty pronouncing where it actually flies into, as it's a very strangely, well, it's not strange to them obviously, but to <laughs> to our poor uh, English and European ears, it's Zaudzi. I've no idea how to say that. And then from Zaozi, Zaozi, it flies back to Marseille, Marseille back to Lyon, and Lyon back to Paris and Orly. So we're going to take the aircraft from Marseille up to Lyon, and this is a regular flight. It's flight number SS six three one, and it is a Corsair flight. This is a French uh, airline. And one of the best parts of this is that it's the aircraft, which is the great thing. If you've, ever, if you've seen any of my other videos around the South Pacific, you'll see me flying in the A330-300. But this is a real treat. This is the A330-900. The Neo. And the first thing you notice about this aircraft is those massive engines. <laughs> they are Rolls Royce Trent 7000s and they are the Neo option. I think it's two years, less than two years old, this aircraft. And I call it, I call them Little Smelly. Uh, there's a reason for that. Some people may know it, and some people may not. So the problem with this aircraft was, when it was delivered in its early days, back in 2019, there were a few problems with the smell pervading the cabin. And when, when we say the cabin, that's not this bit, that's this bit. So passengers were getting this smell and the smell was of either a burning smell or a fuel smell. Mostly a smoky, burny sort of smell. So of course people were panicking and thinking that the aircraft was going to set on fire. And people had to be reassured by the aircraft staff and at the airport and it was not going down very well. Some aircraft even got returned to Airbus. And one of them spent a month with Airbus before it was sent back and they just went but it's fine. <laughs> and what tended to happen was there'd be this smell for around about the first three or four flights. But after that it'd clear. Now if you've started the A320, you've done the checklist, you should know that there is a 30 second delay. And that's for a very good reason. So when we start the engines on the A320 on the Neo, we turn off the packs and the packs we'll just call it passenger air conditioning there are two of those one from each engine and the inputs well sorry the intakes are from inside the engine cowling so air is sucked in through a little hole goes in through the wing into the air conditioning 
and from there it goes into the aircraft. And the thing is, one of the reasons you turn the packs off is because it's easier to start the engines when they're not under load. But another reason is that when the packs are off, there's no intake of air from inside the engine. So obviously when you're starting the engine, before it is fired, there's going to be fuel. So you don't want to be sucking fuel inside the cockpit or into the cabin. Last thing you want. So you don't want to gas your passengers, you don't want them to send the person to flame suddenly. Similarly, once the engines have been started, there's going to be smoke possibly around the front of the engine because it's going to circulate a little bit. And so what we do is we leave the packs off for 30 seconds. So in part of the checklist there is a 30 second delay between starting the engine and when it reaches its available flash on the screen. MFD, then you have to wait 30 seconds before you turn on the pack again. And that's to stop any air going into the intake and being sucked in and stop the smoke that could possibly be in the air or any left for the fuel that hadn't been burned off. After 30 seconds, the fuel will have been sucked through the engine, the smoke will have gone, and we should be okay to feed air into the passengers. So my first thought was, well, maybe that was because they weren't following the checklist, or maybe the checklist was wrong, so that they, they were turning it on straight away. Or maybe there was some other issue, and I'm thinking the other issue could also be, um, I think someone, I think I did read that someone suggested this as well, which was that, of course, when you assemble an aircraft, if you've ever assembled an engine, you know that you oil parts before you put the engine, well, as you, before you put them into the engine. So, as the engine is assembled, you oil the metal surfaces that are going to be moving and meeting. And some of those surfaces won't be oiled in the same way once the engine's running. So, there will be some surfaces that have oil on them of the wrong type, or where they wouldn't normally receive oil. So. That has to then burn off as the engine's starting, so when you first start an engine it is pretty smoky because you've got a lot of oil in there that maybe shouldn't be there. So once it's been run for a while that air um, oil burns off or disappears and then it isn't so smoky. So when you assemble bits of an aircraft they're going to get oiled, so maybe there's something in the air conditioning unit, one of the fans or something that had oil on it as it was being assembled, that then burnt off after three or four journeys, and so the smell disappeared. So if they've got a reputation, and I'll, I'll, that's why I call it Little Stinky, because it's massive, <laughs> and it was a bit smelly for the first few flights. Anyway, she's a very beautiful aircraft, and very noticeable feature is the wings and how much they bend when they're in flight. So you can see there that the, I don't know what you want to call them, the Charlottes, they're at around about a 45 degree angle, and when we're flying that wing will come up quite a large amount, and the, more like a 70 degree angle. So the wing is going to go and bend to about there somewhere. Anyway, let's get it started. So this uh, model has only been released a few days. I've flown it once already, but unfortunately the recording got corrupted, so I couldn't use it. So I wanted to. This will be the first flight that gets recorded, but it's my second flight in the aircraft. And there's a couple of things I noticed. One is that the test doesn't make an audible sound, which is a bit strange. Normally get an audible on that. And same with the cargo smoke test. All lights seem okay.
Okay, so um, I've already done the pre um, turning on checks. Everything seems okay. Oh, and because it's using the um, A32 and X. Hello. She doesn't say much. She also doesn't seem to move much. But, you know, she's there in case I fall asleep or whatever. The PGP um, A330. That's a bit of a pain because the the lights are really dim on that. So it's nice to be able to see the figures again. It's been very nice. So we'll go ahead and get clearance while the passengers are still loading. Oh, it's a very nice feature, I don't know if you saw that. But yeah, we're loading through the... just in front of the wing door. Very nice. Province ground SS631 IFR to Saint Exubery ready to copy. SS631 is cleared to Saint Exubery Airport as filed. Take off runway, one tree left climb, and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure frequency is 124.5, squawk 0011. SS631 cleared to Saint Exubery Airport as filed. Take off runway, one tree left climb, and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure on 124.5, squawk 0011. SS631 readback is correct. Contact ground on 121.73 when ready to taxi. Good day. Province ground SS631 with golf ready to taxi IFR. SS631 taxi to and hold short of runway 1 tree left using taxiway golf 4 Charlie 5 Delta 4 Charlie 3. Charlie two, Charlie one. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the MCDU programming, and um, Taxiing hold we'll get back to you once it's completed. Left by taxiway golf for Charlie five Delta for Charlie three Charlie two Charlie one SS six three one. Province ground SS631, could you please disconnect the jetway from the aircraft? Province ground SS631 requesting pushback. So bug and break is off. And full breaks. And standard ground. So as I said, we have to wait 30 seconds before we can turn the packs on. And 
nice which is to know. Spell it as on, flap to two. Lights are on. Signal signs are down. Province Tower SS 631 ready for departure runway 13 left IFR to Saint Exuberant. It's both around. SS 631 QMH 30 decimal 03. Wind 290 at 7. Cleared for takeoff runway 13 left. Cleared for takeoff runway 13 left SS 
So this river valley over here is the Rhone Valley. And these are some quite important mountain ranges. I've no idea what they're called though, so um, we'll just not go to that. I'll uh, put that in the post. <laughs> so uh, the, the river valley follows its way around and then Leon's ahead there somewhere. Spectacular scenery there. So pre landing chips. Spoilers are on. Lights are on. Super sounds on. Contact Zaytex Tower on 121.83 when inbound. Tower on 
what's going on but they don't seem to realise we're here. <laughs> yeah they, they just don't even realise we're here I think. <laughs> 